Hello and welcome. So I'm going to talk about um, measure preserving extended dynamic mode decomposition, or if you like, a four-line algorithm for structure preserving and convergent DMD. So I'm interested in a dynamical system with a state x inside some state space omega. This is governed by an unknown function f. So the state at time n plus 1 is given by f of the state at time n. A discrete time dynamical system. I could also consider continuous time dynamical systems by looking at uh, discrete time steps. Now my goal is to learn properties of the system from uh, trajectory data collected in snapshots. So this will be x in blue and y in green, where y is equal to f of x. This data could be collected from a single long trajectory or multiple shorter bursts. Uh, it could come from experimental measurements or numerical simulations. And I can use it for things like forecasting, control, design, or simply understanding this dynamical system. So that's the goal. We're going to um, approach this using Kuhlman operators. So the Kuhlman operator K acts on functions on the state space omega via this composition formula here. So the Kuhlman operator looks one time step forward. This uh, composition allows you to show that the Kuhlman operator is linear. So you've gone from a nonlinear representation in state space to a linear representation in function space, and the Koopman operator allows you to map between uh, the two. So this looks great, right? You've gone from something nonlinear to something linear. But there is a catch. The Koopman operator acts on an infinite dimensional function space. So you've gone from nonlinear finite dimensional to linear but infinite dimensional. Right, throughout this talk, we are going to make an assumption that the system is measure preserving with respect to a volume or measure omega. This allows us to work in an L2 space, so a space of square integrable functions. But the key thing is that there's an inner product structure, these angled brackets, and this will be key. So many systems have a measure that they preserve, for example, Hamiltonian, ergodic. Uh, or many systems in their post-transient regimes. But the key equation to remember is that having a, a, a measure-preserving system means that the Kuhlman operator preserves the inner product. So the inner product between two, uh, well, between an observable gene itself is the same as between Kg and Kg. Okay, so, so why is the Kuhlman operator useful? Well, you have something called the Kuhlman mode decomposition, which allows you to split up a, an observable G in terms of a sum of eigenfunctions whose coefficients are known as Kuhlman modes, and something that I've labeled as uh, the continuous spectrum, or an integral over generalized eigenfunctions. A good analogy is if you place a white light through a prism, splits it up into different wavelengths. Here, we're splitting up G into a bunch of uh, simpler parts. And we'll see in a second that we know how each of these parts behaves under the dynamics. That allows us to place things together, uh, the, those simpler parts together, to get an idea of the whole. In a similar way, you might look at the uh, intensity in different wavelengths of uh, solar radiation. And this allows you to deduce um, the chemical composition of the sun. Right, so if you want to evaluate G, at time n, this is the same thing as applying the Koopman operator n times uh, 2g. Now you know how the Koopman operator behaves for eigenfunctions. You bring up this power of the eigenvalue. In a similar fashion, you get this Fourier integral over the continuous spectrum. So this is a, an example of where looking at the simpler parts allows you to build up the more complicated part. More generally, the spectral information of the Koopman operator encodes geometric features, invariant measures, transient and long time behavior, coherent structures, quasi periodicity, uh, etc. So, our goal now becomes data driven approximation of the spectral properties of the Koopman operator K. Okay, there are some challenges associated with this goal. Number one, how do we compute the spectrum? We want a method that converges. How do we deal with continuous spectrum? So this component over here. A continuous spectrum is associated with um, chaotic systems normally, 
but it also appears in non-chaotic systems, for example, the pendulum, which we'll look at later on, the nonlinear pendulum. Um, the third challenge is, can we, can we achieve those goals with a discretization that preserves the measure omega? So this is very important for things like stability, improved qualitative and long-time behaviour, looking at things like long-time statistics, autocorrelations, and things like that. So those are the challenges, and what I'm going to show you is a four-line algorithm that tackles these challenges very simply uh, for DMD-type methods. So to build this approach, our first step is Extended Dynamic Mode Decomposition, or EDMD. I'm going to offer two interpretations of this algorithm. The first is shown here. So we have a subspace of observables, psi1 up to psi n. This gives us features, which are collected in this uh, quasi-matrix psi. And we have two types uh, of data matrices, psi x in uh, blue here, which is just the uh, features evaluated at the x points, and psi y, which is the features evaluated at the y points in green. We also have a diagonal weight matrix, which just tells us how important each of the snapshot data is. Now you can interpret EDMD as taking these matrices, which you get from the data, and using them as a quadrature or an approximation of certain inner products here. So we have this matrix G, psi x, w, psi x, or blue, blue. This gives you uh, an approximation of the inner products between the observables themselves. You also have this matrix uh, A, or psi x, w, psi y, which gives you the same inner products, but now you've got an additional uh, K here on the left observable. Using these two matrices, you can build up an approximation of the Koopman operator on the subspace corresponding to the span of these n observables. So that's the first interpretation. The key point being these approximations of inner products. The second interpretation, which is probably more familiar, is minimizing a certain residual. So if we take an observable g, which we uh, can expand in our um, psi 1 up to psi n, our observables, like this, we can look at the error of approximating the Koopman operator acting on G by a matrix that acts on the coefficients, these coefficients in boldface. It's very natural to try and minimize the square of this error integrated over the state space omega. So that leads to this minimization problem here. Again, if we interpret the snapshot data as giving a quadrature, for this, uh, quadrature rule for this integral, we end up with the following weighted least squares problem. Okay, so that's uh, in fact the original way that um, EDMD was, was derived. So you have this weighted least squares problem. Now combining these two interpretations, remember the inner products and this weighted least squares problem allows us to derive a method that preserves the measure. To see this, recall that measure preserving means that the Kuhlman operator preserves this inner product. We can approximate these inner products using the matrix capital G. So a very, very simple idea is to enforce this equality here between capital G and K star, that's the adjoint G, K. You do this, you end up with exactly the same minimization problem, but with this additional constraint. You apply quadrature as before, and this leads to something called an orthogonal procrustis problem. Okay, so it's the same uh, problem but now with this um, extra condition, okay, this assumption here. All right, so, so this leads to a very simple algorithm. We know how to solve uh, this minimization problem. Here it is, four lines. In the first line, we compute the matrix or the matrices G and A using the snapshot data. In the second line, we compute a singular value decomposition of uh, this matrix here. So this uh, is the um, inverse of the square root of G. We then take that singular value decomposition, we throw away the matrix corresponding to the singular values, and we swap the order of the uh, unitary parts, and we compute an eigen decomposition in step three. Then in step four, we can piece all of these uh, parts together and obtain an approximation of the Koopman operator, this matrix K, its eigenvectors V, and its eigenvalues lambda. So it's a very simple 
approach. And you can see that you can use it with any DMD type method. For example, standard DMD is a special case of uh, eDMD. So you can still use this algorithm for DMD approaches, uh, where of course the DMD, the observables become linear functions. Okay, so let's look at an example of this in practice. So here I've collected data. Uh, I've got a jet, and I've also got a plate. Okay, so there's some turbulent flow over here in my field of view. I collect um, approximately uh, 50,000 uh, data points or, 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 or locations in, in the physical domain of the vertical and horizontal velocity. Okay, so that gives me the dimension of the dynamical system, uh, approximately 100,000. The Reynolds number of this flow is about 6 times 10 to the 4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the uh, prediction of the turbulent kinetic energy using the Koopman mode decomposition with three algorithms. In green, I have MPEDMD, the new algorithm, Measure Preserving Extended Dynamic Mode Decomposition. And you can see that it does a really good job of predicting the correct energy value. In blue, I also have uh, Pi DMD. It's a beautiful algorithm. You can look at it uh, in this paper down here. Um, the Pi stands for Physics Informed. So Pi DMD is um, trying to preserve the measure, but it doesn't use that matrix G, those inner products. And that's really a crucial difference. So you see that Pi DMD is stable, so this blue curve here, but predicts the wrong energy value. If we look at EDMD in red, we see that it's unstable as time progresses. OK, so you can really see the difference if you look at the time average kinetic energy against the height. The height Y here is uh, how, how far up I look above the plate in this field of view. So MPEDMD, the new algorithm in green, is able to get the correct distribution of energy. Pi DMD is stable, but gives you the wrong distribution of the energy. We can also look at the, uh, at the actual um, flow predicted using the Kuma mode decomposition. Okay, so remember the system is chaotic, so we don't expect to reproduce the flow exactly. Uh, but MPEDMD is good, doing a really good job of um, getting the correct features. Pi DMD is stable, but is clearly producing uh, the wrong type of flow. EDMD, you'll see as time progresses, initially does a good job, but then starts to blow up. It becomes uh, unstable. And that's uh, really because it's not preserving the measure. The measure uh, preservation of um, MPEDMD is giving you a stability property. OK. So that's one example. You can also take this example and look at um, wave number spectra, which roughly speaking are Fourier transforms of autocorrelations. And these give you an idea of the turbulent statistics of the flow. So here are the, the true statistics. Here's the, the statistics um, produced using trajectories of MP EDMD. It's very hard to spot the difference here. If you look at pi DMD, it gives you something that's stable, but it's got the wrong statistics. And particularly, you've got this band at the wrong frequency. EDMD is giving you an unstable uh, prediction, right? You can see this in the uh, lower frequencies. So um, a summary of the convergence theory. You can consult the paper uh, to look at the theorems and also the proofs. Um, but in a nutshell, using this idea of um, preserving the measure or structure preservation, you're able to prove all sorts of nice properties about the algorithm MPEDMD. For example, you have convergent spectra. Okay, so it's the first Galerkin method that achieves this. You have convergent spectral measures. Uh, so those are a way to deal with continuous spectra. If you want details, uh, then consult the paper. You also have a convergent Kuhlman mode decomposition. And finally, you're measure preserving, even if your data is not collected in an orthogonal uh, basis. And the key ingredient for proving all of these nice properties hold for MPEDMD is that you have a measure preserving discretization. For example, let's look at the Lorentz system. So here I'm going to uh, show you convergence uh, of spectral measures or continuous spectra. So the observables I'm going to look at are uh, the three um, coordinates in x, x1, x2, x3. I'm going to look at um, observables corresponding to delay embedding. OK, so g, k acting on g, up to k to the n minus 1 acting on g. 
The layer embedding is really nice because MPEDMD allows you to give an explicit uh, convergence rate. So you know that the error associated with using this space of observables is going to decay like log n over n. Okay, so here's the convergence in the number of data points for G1, G2, G3, the measures or the continuous spectra. You see the convergence at the expected Monte Carlo rate. Over here, you have convergence in the number of delays or the n here, and this is giving you the expected uh, rate of convergence. So that's very nice. Let's also look at the nonlinear, the fully nonlinear pendulum. Okay, so this system of equations here. Here, the state space is this periodic interval corresponding to the angle x1, and also the whole of the real line corresponding to the momentum. I'm going to look at um, observables corresponding to delay embedding of this observable g. Now, if I look at the um, generalized eigenfunctions or continuous spectrum of the Kuhlman operator associated with the system, what I should get is a bunch of Dirac's localized along constant energy surfaces in phase space. So here, I've plotted uh, the eigenfunctions computed using MPEDMD and EDMD, and you can see this localization. Okay, so this log is on a log scale, log of the absolute value. You also see that the MPEDMD eigenvalue or eigenfunction is much more localized than the EDMD one. Okay, and you expect localization, so this is an indication that MPEDMD is more accurate. Okay, so let's make that uh, more precise. We can measure the error, so I'm going to also add Gaussian random noise to the measurement matrices psi x and psi y. I'm going to measure the mean error of the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues. By error, I'm computing the error associated to the true infinite dimensional Koopman operator without any uh, measurement noise. To do that, I can use uh, something called ResDMD, which is discussed in these papers here. But for now, all you should think about is that this is just a way of measuring uh, the error associated with the infinite dimensional function space. Okay, so I have the error, the mean error, plotted against the noise ratio for different m, number of measurements. And you see that MPEDMD is pretty stable with respect to noise. And the error decreases as we increase the number of measurements. This is known as strongly consistent estimation. In contrast, for EDMD, it's much more unstable with respect to noise, and uh, the error doesn't decrease as we increase the number of measurements. So why does this occur? Why, why is MPEDMD more robust to noise? Well, um, it turns out that the orthogonal procrustes problem is equivalent to a constrained total least squares problem. So total least squares is where you minimize the error, assuming you have measurement noise in both x and y. And that's really uh, the crucial point here, that um, because of this connection, you get much more uh, robustness uh, to measurement noise. OK, so a summary of MPEDMD. We had a four-line algorithm for measure-preserving extended dynamic mode decomposition. Some advantages. We get convergence guarantees for spectra, continuous spectra, and Koopman mode decompositions. This even comes with explicit rates for delay embedding. We have long time stability and improved qualitative behavior. We also have an increased stability to noise, for example, measurements. It's also easy to use with any existing DMD type method. If you want the code, you can visit uh, this GitHub uh, page here. Also, you can look at my website uh, down here for further presentations, papers, and uh, code. Thank you very much for your attention.